Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be introducing the first four rules of implication. Um, so we'll start out with a pretty easy one. The first one's called modus ponens. Modus ponens is Latin. Uh, I took a Latin class. So modus just means way and then ponens is this thing called a participle which is kind of like uh, I don't know, the participles are a bit hard to explain, but it, it literally means like way of putting. So ponens means putting, um, or method of putting, or something like that. So let's take a look at the form of modus ponens. Modus ponens is written if p then q, so let's write our p then q, if p then q. And um, all the rules of implication are written as arguments, so we're going to be using our premise separator. And so that's the first premise, if p then q, the second premise is p, and we only have two premises, so the next thing we're going to write is a conclusion, the two forward slashes, and then the conclusion is q. So modus ponens says, if you have p, then you have q, if you have p, then you have q. We have p, therefore we have q. So what's an example of this uh, in real life? Well, if I'm eating a Big Mac, then... That Big Mac was uh, purchased at McDonald's. I'm eating a Big Mac, therefore that Big Mac was purchased at McDonald's. Therefore it was purchased at McDonald's, something like that. Um, I also like to give an example of modus ponens with math. So let's say if I have 2 plus 2, then I have 4. I have 2 plus 2, so necessarily I must have 4. Uh, I shouldn't have said the word necessarily uh, for kind of complicated philosophical reasons, but uh, yeah, if I have 2 plus 2, then I have 4. I have 2 plus 2, therefore I have 4. So that's how modus ponens works. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, one of the advantages of learning truth tables first is that we can actually prove this argument's valid using indirect truth table, right? We're not just uh, learning these arguments arbitrarily. So if we use an indirect truth table to assume that the premises are true and the conclusion is false, you know, we can do that, there's no problem in doing that. True, true, false, so the conclusion Q is false, and the P is true. So we get true, true, false, right? And if P is true and Q is false, and we're assuming the conditional to be true, then we get a contradiction. So our assumption that, uh, that the argument is valid cannot be true, and so hence the argument is valid. So this is a perfectly valid argument, and that's why it's a rule of inference. So let's take a look at a pretty related rule of inference. So I'm just going to copy uh, if p then q, um, and I'm also going to copy this thing right here. I'm copying my premise separator. So I have if p then q. Now where I'm going to change it is I'm going to put not q, and then I'm just going to uh, copy my conclusion indicator. I'm going to put not p. Um, this rule right here is called modus uh, tollens. And just like modus uh, ponens means way of putting, modus tollens uh, means like way of, uh, it has a bunch of different de definitions. It's kind of a an irregular word, it comes from this word uh, tolo, tolera, sustuli, sublatum, as opposed to pono, which is pono, ponera, posui, positum. So uh, pono is a bit more regular in its form. But the, the, the form, I uh, the definition of, of tolo, I remember uh, m most often is like destroy, but I think it can also mean like remove or take away. So uh, just I'm just going to call it way of taking away, or uh, method of taking away. So um, let's take a look at uh, this argument form. Uh, if you have p, then you have q. You don't have q, and therefore you don't have p. So let's take a look at the Big Mac example again. If I'm eating a Big Mac, then it was purchased at McDonald's. The food I'm eating was not purchased at McDonald's, therefore the food I'm eating is not a Big Mac. So that seems to make sense to us. Or uh, let me just modify this example to kind of make it flow a little bit easier. The logic will still be as valid, but uh, I just want to make it sound more intuitive. So if I'm eating a Big Mac, then my food is purchased at McDonald's. My food is not purchased at McDonald's, therefore my food is, 
therefore my food is not a Big Mac, or therefore I'm not eating a Big Mac. Um, but an important thing to note is if this cue is false, th that the food I'm eating was not purchased at McDonald's, and that doesn't just eliminate a Big Mac, but that also eliminates anything that could have been purchased at McDonald's, which is the McChicken, Chicken McNuggets, uh, you know, Quarter Pounder with cheese, and so on and so forth. And this argument, just like the previous one, is also valid using an indirect truth table. We get our true, true, false right here. So if the negation is false in the conclusion, that means P is true. P is true. If the negation is uh, true in the premise, that means that P is false. P is false. And again, we get our similar form of true, true, false in the conditional. And the conditional can't be true when P, or Q, uh, when P is true and Q is false. And so hence, our assumption that the argument is invalid comes up with a contradiction and so the argument is valid. Um, just going ahead and using uh, our, our math example again. If I have 2 plus 2 then I have 4. I don't have 4, right? So if I don't have 4 then I don't have 2 plus 2 or anything else that could give me 4 including 4 plus 0, 9 minus 5, 100 minus 96 and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at the next rule. The next rule is called hypothetical syllogism. Hype Hypothetical, uh, hmm, hypothetical syllogism. It's written like that. Uh, go ahead and combine these two words. There we go. It's written like hypothetical syllogism. Hypothetical syllogism ex is explained in this way. Uh, if you have P, then you have Q. Right. So we're already used to that uh, kind of argument. Um, if you have Q, then you have R. And we're already used to that. So if you have Q, then you have R. We haven't really seen this form. Uh, but you might already be able to guess the conclusion. The conclusion is, so therefore, I uh, should have put two forward slashes right here. So therefore, if you have P, then you have R. And so this argument works by kind of uh, P giving way to Q and then Q giving way to R. And so this Q kind of connects with itself. The Q is the consequent and the first premise connects with the Q as the antecedent in the second premise. And the Q gets eliminated and so then you get, if you get P, then you get R. And so that's what our, uh, that's what our conclusion is. Um, I'm just gonna put this down a little bit more. And we can also prove this using indirect truth table. True right here, true right here, false right here. Remember that the conditional can only be false when the antecedent, in this case P, is true, and the conclusion, in this case R, is false. So when the antecedent is true and the consequence is false, then that's the only way the conditional can be false. So P is true and R is false. So R, we have an R right here, so I'm gonna put false. Um, P, we have a true P right here. Uh, so that means that uh, P is true, and if P is true, then Q can't be false, because if Q is false, then um, we get a contradiction. That means that Q has to be true. So we put our Q right here as true, and we get a contradiction. And so as a result of that, the argument uh, can't be invalid, because we recent, uh, under assuming it was uh, invalid, we got a contradiction. So hence, the argument is valid. Um, that was hypothetical syllogism. Let's take a look at the last rule. The last rule is called disjunctive syllogism. Okay, so disjunctive syllogism is explained this way. Um, P or Q, that's the first premise. Not P, therefore, you might guess this conclusion here. So uh, I was talking with my nephew and he actually used a form of uh, disjunctive syllogism in real life. He said, my mom's going to buy me a DS for Christmas. And I said, how do you know that? He said, well, she either said she was going to buy me a DS for my birthday or Christmas. She didn't buy it for me for my birthday. Therefore, she's going to get it for me for Christmas. That's how disjunctive, disjunctive syllogism works. It works as kind of either or situation, either this or that, not this, therefore that. Um, and just like the other arguments, using uh, indirect truth tables, we can prove that this argument is valid. 
is the negation uh, is true for if the negation is true, then that means that p is false. So p is false and q is false, false, false. And as a result, the OR operator can't be true when both of its disjuncts are false, and hence the argument is valid. So this is just an introduction to the first four rules of inference, and I'll see you guys in the next video.